Fear is one of the most common feelings and experiences people have. It can show up in a lot of different ways, like anger, jealousy, or even boredom. But what if there was a simple question that could cut through these feelings and show what they're really like? When negative emotions begin to control you, simply ask yourself, will this kill me within the next two minutes? More often than not, the answer shows a deep truth. If it's a matter of life and death, you should act right away. However, if we don't, we have to face the fact that our fears aren't as real as we thought. It's interesting how this one question can change the way we think about things that we think are dangerous to our health. This way of thinking not only takes the mystery out of our fears, but it also encourages us to face them head on, knowing that most of our worries are unfounded. The work of Dolores Cannon gives us a lot of useful information about the unseen world and the afterlife. Her books and years of research into the mysteries of life beyond the physical realm tell stories that make us question what we think we know about reality. We can think about how consciousness continues beyond the limits of our bodies when we read about Canon's past lives and the metaphysical aspects of existence. This way of looking at things tells us to have a bigger picture of life, where fear is just a short-lived thought in the big picture of eternal consciousness. Now, let's include another wonderful person in our story, Julie Ryan, who discovered deep insights in Hands of Light by Barbara Brennan, an amazing work that connects the spiritual and the quantum worlds. In the context of energetic healing, this book by a former NASA physicist explains the complex concepts of quantum physics. Brennan and Cannon both believe that our thoughts have the power to change our reality. This idea comes from the idea that our consciousness works like a satellite dish, able to receive and send frequencies across the universe. Like Cannon, Ryan found that all it took was thinking about an entity to tune into their unique frequency, which could cross dimensions and distances. This new information supports what Cannon said about the continuity of consciousness in her regression therapy work. As Ryan grew as a medical intuitive, she became more open to her abilities to see ghosts and talk to them. For Ryan, getting people to accept and value her skills came with problems, just like Cannon did when she presented her groundbreaking research. Still, the work of both women has given us new ways to think about life, healing, and how our consciousness lasts forever. This shows how important it is to be open curious and ready to explore beyond what we think we know. Their combined legacies make us think about the endless possibilities that lie ahead if we use the power of our thoughts to their fullest and accept that everything is connected. Ryan's explanation of the 12 stages of transition paints a clear picture of the change from a physical to a spiritual life, highlighting how consciousness stays the same throughout. When Ryan talks about the dying process, especially the roles that spiritual beings play and the comfort they bring, it fits with the idea that our departure from this world is both a guided and deeply personal journey. It's interesting to see how people go through this deep transition through a process that is structured the same way for everyone but is modified for each person. This design suggests that there is a lot going on in the world where the physical and spiritual worlds meet and are connected by invisible forces and bonds that go beyond our lives. There is a comforting message in these thoughts. In our last moments, we are wrapped in a web of spiritual guidance, linked to both our loved ones and the consciousness of all beings. The journey through the 12 stages of transition shows that life goes on, and the end of our physical lives is just the start of a new part of our eternal soul. From this point of view, death should not be seen as the end of everything, but as a turning point where things change and start over again and again. Imagine this. It's not just a quiet exit when someone is about to die. Instead, Dolores says it's more like a big party, a spiritual gathering where huge angels show up. Julie says they're about six or seven feet tall and have huge wings. Who knows if angels really do look like that? That's how they look to Julie, though, which helps her understand what's going on. After someone dies, Julie talks about something called the spirit bubble, 
that comes out of the top of the head. Then there is a line of angels and loved one spirits coming together around the person. It starts out as a circle and then opens up into the shape of a horseshoe. This made me think of the work of Dolores Cannon, who says that we are all linked and that life is all about love and learning. What this means is that everyone is coming together to tell them, hey, you did good. Let's get you ready for the next big thing. Two more angels show up at some point and start moving their wings, making this vortex above the person's head. This makes me think of what Dolores said about how the soul moves through different levels or dimensions. It's interesting to think of this movement as a cosmic takeoff that gets the spirit ready for its next stage of evolution. When you think about how Julie Ryan can connect with frequencies and talk to ghosts, it blows your mind. She says that we are all like big satellite dishes on our heads that pick up vibes and talk to spirits, just like when you tune in to your favorite radio station. Think about that. Would you like to talk to Elvis or Cleopatra? You're in as soon as you think of them. Isn't it crazy? Julie Ryan talks about seeing ghosts and communicating with them like an MRI. It's almost like she's doing what Dolores does, but in real time, helping people understand their spiritual and physical illnesses. She tells frightful tales, like how she could tell if someone had mold poisoning just by sensing their energy. You've been feeling off for years, and then someone tells you it's mold. It changes everything. Beginning this journey are books like Anatomy of the Spirit and Life After Death, which help us learn new things about healing and energy. It's kind of like the work of Dolores Cannon, in that it uses knowledge and insight to help us find our way through the spiritual landscapes we all live in, whether we know it or not. So, it seems like all of us have a group of spiritual guides with us, like Dumbledore or Gandalf from a fantasy book. But it gets even more interesting. Not only these mentor-like figures, but it feels like all of our loved ones who have died are around us like a cheer squad. Remember that your grandmother, your favorite uncle, and the pets you had as kids are all with you and helping you. Julie Ryan sees a link that goes back many lifetimes and is part of what she calls the collective consciousness, or source. It feels like each of us is a drop in the ocean of life, making the whole thing bigger. The work of Dolores Cannon also talks a lot about the source. She goes deep into our past lives and shows how our spirits have moved through time and seen life from every angle. Like watching the same movie over and over, but each time it's set in a different time, the characters wear different clothes, and the ending sometimes changes. No matter how good or bad an experience is, our spirits want to take it all in so they can grow and change. Everything in life is like a big school, and each life is a different class we sign up for. Parallel realities and the idea that we exist in more than one dimension at the same time give us a mind-bending view of what it means to be human. Through their teachings, they encourage us to think about the bigger effects of the decisions and experiences we make, realizing that every moment is a chance to learn more and more. The exploration of this territory, especially when navigating the transitions between life and death, presents a profound perspective. It's within this space that individuals like Christopher Kerr and organizations like Mind Valley pave the way, offering masterclasses that span the breadth of human experience, from the spiritual to the relational, all aimed at demystifying the process of dying and enriching our comprehension of life's final frontier. In exploring why the medical establishment often avoids discussing the spiritual or less tangible aspects of death, it's clear that the focus has significantly shifted towards a more scientific and intervention-based approach. This shift, while it has advanced medicine tremendously, sometimes neglects the comfort and holistic well-being of the patient, particularly as they approach the end of their life. Dr. Kerr's research into the dreams and visions experienced by patients nearing death provides a unique window into understanding this transition. These experiences often dismissed by the medical community, hold profound meaning for the patients and Aline with Cannon's findings about the continuity of the soul. The reluctance of the medical establishment to incorporate these considerations reflects a broader challenge. 
reconciling the material with the spiritual. Yet the stories shared by Dr. Kerr and the profound insights from Cannon's work suggest a richer, more complex understanding of life, death, and what lies beyond. It prompts us to question, reflect, and perhaps open ourselves to the possibility that our existence is far more intricate and interconnected than we've been led to believe. Why do some medical professionals seem to overlook the holistic aspects of dying, focusing solely on physical symptoms? It's a reflection of how modern medicine has evolved, increasingly emphasizing technological interventions and treatments while often sidelining the patient's emotional and spiritual needs. Dr. Kerr's research sheds light on the unique, vivid dreams and visions experienced by individuals nearing the end of their lives, experiences that are not merely hallucinations, but deeply meaningful events that provide comfort, reconciliation, and understanding. These findings echo Cannon's observations about the soul's continuity and evolution, suggesting that as we approach death, we are not just facing the end, but are also undergoing a process of spiritual resolution. The distinction between dreams and visions in Dr. Kerr's research is particularly interesting, as it challenges conventional perceptions. Unlike near-death experiences, which often feature dramatic elements like tunnels of light or encounters with divine figures, the experiences of those nearing death are characterized by profound personal significance, focusing on relationships and unresolved emotional issues rather than metaphysical explorations. This process of intense living in the latter stages of life, as Dr. Kerr describes it, aligns with Cannon's teachings about the soul's journey through different lifetimes. Each life is an opportunity to learn, grow, and resolve karmic debts, with death providing a moment to reflect on these lessons and prepare for the next stage of the soul's evolution positive impact of these end-of-life experiences on patients' fear of death is another area. Both suggest that as individuals confront their mortality, they gain insights that reduce their fear of death, leading to a more peaceful transition. This transformative process underscores the interconnectedness of all life and the ongoing journey of the soul beyond physical death. The medical establishment with its focus on curing physical ailments, often overlooks this spiritual dimension of dying. However, Dr. Kerr's research reveals an alternative viewpoint that is consistent with the idea that our existence is not just limited to the physical body, but also a part of a continuous spiritual journey. These end-of-life experiences, characterized by vivid dreams and encounters with loved ones who have passed, suggest that the process of dying is as much about spiritual reconciliation and understanding as it is about the cessation of bodily functions. This perspective echoes the idea that our lives on Earth are chapters in a much larger story, where each experience, relationship and challenge contributes to our soul's evolution. The dreams and visions experienced by the dying are not random neural firings, but meaningful, spiritually significant events that offer comfort, closure, and sometimes profound insights into the nature of existence itself. The distinction between dreams and visions in this context is crucial. Rather than being mere hallucinations or the byproducts of brain activity, these experiences are understood as meaningful communications from the soul, offering reassurance and love in the final stages of life. They reinforce the notion that we are never truly alone even in death, and that the bonds of love and connection transcend physical limitations. Moreover, these experiences challenge our conventional understanding of time and reality. The dying often report encounters that seem to exist outside of time, where past, present and future merge, offering a glimpse into the non-linear nature of spiritual existence. This concept suggests that our souls are part of a vast, interconnected web of consciousness that exists beyond the confines of our physical reality. The experiences of those nearing the end of life reveal a profound truth about our existence, that death is not an end, but a transition into another state of being. This understanding offers comfort 
not only to those who are dying, but also to their loved ones, providing a sense of peace and hope that love and consciousness endure beyond the physical plane. In wrapping up our journey through the insights of Dr. Christopher Kerr, Julie Ryan, and the spiritual exploration inspired by Dolores Cannon, it becomes evident that the experience of transitioning from life to death is multifaceted, weaving together the scientific, the spiritual, and the deeply personal. Each perspective, whether grounded in the halls of medicine, the intuitive connection with the spiritual realm, or the exploration of our soul's journey through past lives, offers a unique lens through which we can view the final chapter of our earthly existence. It serves as a reminder that the variety of experiences and beliefs that make up our world enrich our understanding of death, just like life itself. The convergence of these views encourages a conversation that transcends the boundaries of science and spirituality, inviting us to consider the possibility that, in the moments leading to our departure from this world, we are not just biological beings coming to an end, but souls embarking on the next phase of an eternal journey.